Hey, the Gadget Man here with nothing but gadgets, and today I'm going to be talking about this Victor 4K Ultra HD Wi-Fi camera. This is the AC940 model, so three, two, one, let's get at it. Alright guys, this camera was sent to me by the Victor company for free to do this review, so I'm excited to break in this box and see what they sent me. Got our manuals and stuff there. Here's the little camera. Now I've never done a action camera review for the Victor company. So uh, this is a new company for me to do a review for. So I'm just uh, really excited to see what they've got here and how it compares to some other stuff that I've had. So let me open this up. A little bit stuck here. That's a good seal. Man, that's a tight seal there. Case is different than some other ones. Look at this little camera here. Very nice. Kind of a rubberized feel to it. It's got some weight to it. Some weight. Let me see if the battery's in it already. How do we get the battery out here? Oh, push this button. Let's see. Push down. Yeah, I gotta push the button down to slide. No, the battery's not in it. This has got some heft to it compared to some other action cameras. So maybe that means it's, it's going to do really well in the testing. Let's see. Button. Menu button. Power button. Uh, here's the power button right here. That's the record button. It's a little bit different layout from some other cameras that I've used. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing about this camera is it's designed to be kind of semi sort of waterproof. Even though it comes with a waterproof camera. This is, I would consider it splash proof. The doors and stuff are a little bit difficult to open on it. Uh, you have to really kind of press down on that button to get it out. And you see there's a rubber pad right here that uh, provides some waterproofing for it. So that's probably why it's a little heavier. Over here you've got your, uh, your HDMI and your USB ports. You press down on that. And it takes just a little bit to get these doors open not used one like this before there you go slide that out okay so you can see that it has that little rubber pad there that seals this off so that's pretty cool um excited to to give it a try where let me see here right here is where the micro sd card goes in right here in the battery compartment let me see the batteries that came with it Okay, so here's everything that it came with. Two batteries, uh, wrist, remote control, bicycle or handlebar uh, clamp, and some other adapters, a quick disconnect clip, some tripod adapter things here, and a couple of uh, mountable quick disconnect plates, a couple replacement sticky pads, some straps, and um, some zip ties, a little cable, this and the camera so it comes with pretty much everything you're going to need to use it under normal circumstances uh doesn't doesn't come with a head strap but uh this is pretty standard equipment uh for most cameras now th these batteries are larger than any other action camera that i've ever tested so hopefully we're going to get some longer battery life out of it the really important thing about these cameras is how they perform in the field so I want to get this thing out and put it to some testing. I'm going to do 4K, HD, uh, fast action, pictures. I'm going to do all that testing for you. And when I get done, I'm going to come back and show you the results. All right, so hold on and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I took it out and I did a bunch of testing with it. And I want to show you the results of that testing so that you can judge for yourself whether this camera is up to your standards and it's going to fit your needs, okay? So the first test that I did is a stabilization test. Now, uh, I have an ATV and I live out in the country, so I mounted this to the front of the ATV. So I just took it down a pretty rough trail to see how it would handle. Um, as I go down the trail, I'm going to be switching between stabilized and unstabilized, um, and I'll be throwing them side by side too. So um, let's go ahead and we'll start off with it with no stabilization, and then intermediately I'll switch it on and off to stabilization throughout the journey. So one, two, three, let's go.
All right, so you saw that stabilization did actually make a difference on this. Uh, the video pretty much without stabilization turned on um, is just not really watchable. It's very, very shaky and just not good at all, but stabilization did help that quite a bit. Now the question is, how does that compare to some other things? Well, um, just for test, testing purposes, I, ha I use my uh, old Samsung Galaxy S8 smartphone and I mounted it on the front of the ATV while I was testing. And so I was, just wanted to give you some comparison between the two. Uh, so basically I'm going to run through that same course again with both of these mounted uh, side by side. And uh, like I said, we'll do the stabilization on and off intermediately as we go around there. So let's uh, see that. It seems that these cameras, at least some that I have tested, work really good whenever you got fast motion stabilization. But some of them that I've tested in the past didn't work so good whenever you were just doing like walking along. They didn't really like that up and down like that. So I did a walking stabilization test with it. So let's go ahead and show you that. We'll start off with no stabilization and then we'll switch the stabilization on. Okay, so you can see there that the stabilization does really work well um, with when walking. It really smoothed it out. When I didn't have it on, the camera was just up and down, up and down. But when I turned the stabilization on, it worked really good. Um, when I'm running through that course, obviously the microphone on this is catching a lot of wind. It is a windy day and it's just really drowning it out. The microphone on the phone did a little better job. I'll let you hear the difference just uh, real shortly here. So this is basically a windy audio test. So let's run that. Okay, so you see that this thing really does uh, pick up a lot of wind when there is wind and it kind of drowns out the volume, but uh, that would give you the, the microphone test as far as wind. Now let's do some other tests here. Um, I'm, now obviously things, this camera can take photographs. So uh, I took some photographs with it and I took some photograph of this. There was a cactus patch there. I like things with a lot of detail in them when I take photographs because that can really tell, uh, give you a good idea. So uh, here's a photograph I took with this camera of this cactus patch. and a photograph I took with this camera right here. Okay, now, um, the video that I was shooting the stabilization in was actually 1080p at 60 frames per second. I used that setting because whenever you're doing fast motion, uh, you want more frames per second. It helps smooth it out a little bit. Whenever you're doing slow motion like what I'm doing right now, 30 frames per second would be fine. But going fast like on the ATV, you really need a little more. You need double that uh, to smooth that video out. Um, but um, I went ahead and shot some video with this in 4K and using this as a sample. So let me go ahead and show you the 4K footage out of this camera of that same cactus patch. Now moving slow here. Okay, 
Now let's see how that 4K footage compared to the 4K footage out of this smartphone and I'll run them side by side for you. So one of the issues that I've had with some other cameras that I've tested is they really didn't sense white balance very well. Um, and I'm shooting in a controlled lighting condition. I'm using daylight colored studio lights here at 6,000 6, Kelvin so that uh, you know it has a good representation of what white is. This is a color balance or calibration chart so that can, a camera can take a picture and get the right colors on it. So I just took a, a picture of this right here. Let me throw that up for you right there. Now I also took a picture with this Galaxy uh, smartphone right here. And I'm going to throw that up on screen. And then now I'm going to throw them side by side. So you can see that it did a pretty good job. It wasn't too far off because this really, these, this smartphone has really great color balance on it. So that's impressive. Now another thing is, is because this has a fisheye lens, it, it creates a lot of distortion. And you can see that in this picture right here. The paper doesn't look square. Um, it looks, on the picture there, it looks rounded. But the camera does have distortion calibration. So I turned it on and took another picture of this page with the distor dis distortion calibration turned on and here's that picture and so that you can see here the distortion calibration does work it does actually square up the piece of paper now it's important for me to tell you right now that the distortion calibration and the anti-shake electric image stabilization um, system does not work in conjunction so you can have one or the other if you want distortion calibration, you have to turn stabilization off. If you want stabilization, you have to turn the uh, distortion calibration off. You can't use them at the same time. So um, that is a limitation there. But it does work when you use the distortion calibration. Okay, so this camera also provides some specialized functions such as slow motion video, time lapse recording, and um, long exposure recording okay so even though that's not not the primary function of the camera i'm going to go ahead and show you some samples i did in testing of these different functions here so the first one we'll do slow motion recording and i simply set down the uh the camera on a little tripod and simply bounced a a soccer ball in front of it now it has two options for slow motion recording one is 120 frames per second and the other is 240 frames per second and so this first shot will be the 120 frames per second okay now the 240 frames per second Okay, so it does provide slow motion video. One of the problems with the slow motion video is that it only records it in 720p quality. Okay, what that, that that's a lower quality, it's not HD quality, it's just 720p. And so it's not super high quality, but it is a, a cute little neat function you can use it for. All right, the next function we're gonna do is time-lapse recording. I set this uh, on the uh, tripod and let it film the sunset. So here is a time-lapse recording of a sunset. Okay. All right. So it can do that. That's pretty cool. Now, if you're going to do a long-term time-lapse recording, you're going to have to connect it to some type of external power because... The battery is going to wear down pretty quickly doing a long term. So either connect it to a power source or to a big uh, battery pack or something like that and it'll work good. All right, now let's do some uh, a, a long exposure. 
Now what long exposure recording is, is basically if you have a very still environment um, and that it's dark or even nighttime or in low light and you want to take a good uh, bright clear picture of it, you can use long exposure. Now it's important to note that the, the everything in the the setting must be still or else it's going to end up like a streak. So like you see on some movies you'll see like where you'll see like car lights like look like a streak on the road that's long exposure so um it was i set it out last night and there was some moon out i don't know about a half moon or something like that and i just set it overlooking the field and did a long exposure which is this one has a maximum of 60 second long exposure so here's that shot Okay guys, well that pretty much sums up. I've run this baby through a lot of tests, stabilization, photo, photograph, 4K test, exposure test, uh, color balance test, distortion calibration test. Um, there's not a whole lot more to show you about it. I hope that it, this has been useful and answered a lot of your questions. Um, I try to do these things in as quick as possible, uh, quick as f fashion as possible, but uh, I also like to explain what I'm doing. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe, and comment. I will throw a link to this camera in the description of the video if you're interested in it. Until next time, this is the Gadget Man saying, I'll see you later.